Hello everybody and welcome to this special UPU event live from Parcel and Post Expo. We have a panel of luminaries with us today. We're going to talk about some really important issues and topics surrounding the our concept of partnerships without borders, which has really been a theme not just of Parcel and Post Expo over, over the years, but also of the opening up of the UPU Consultative Committee. And I will introduce our speakers, but first of all, who am I? I'm Ian Kerr. I'm the host of the UPU Voicemail Podcast, so please do subscribe to the podcast in your favourite podcast app. We're on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, other places, I'm sure. Look for us in your favourite podcasting app, UPU Voicemail. This is part of our ongoing series of video events called UPU Voicemail Exchanges. So, enough about that. Let's get to our expert panel. We have, of course, immediately to my right, we have Tony Robinson, the CEO of UKI Media and the founder of Post Expo. Welcome, Tony. Great to have you with us. We've got Alexander Turn Svanberg. Have I got close there with the surname? Perfect. Perfect from the UPU, Mario Eichelmann from Mail Alliance, and of course Sol Alabi from GeoMain on the end. I might ask each of you to introduce yourselves by asking, I'll ask you a question though as a way of introduction. So Tony, for you first of all, Parcel and Post Expo has been running since 1997, well, 1997. 1997. So, this is the 25th year. This is our 25th anniversary and um, it's a great place to be celebrating an anniversary at the show and uh, particularly it's bigger and it's better than it's ever been before. So tell us a bit about how you came to bring the postal and parcel experts together along with obviously the peak global body for the postal world, the UPU. Yeah from our point of view uh, we're, we're a transportation technology company, we're an exhibition organiser but operating in the field of transportation uh, way back in 1995, we could see the Post were very early adopters of uh, electric vehicles, which offered great uh, advantages for delivering parcels and letters in those days in cities, of course, letters still. Um, silent running, uh, the uh, absence of pollution in cities in particular, very important. So the uh, Post were very early adopters of electric vehicles, we were involved in another aspect of electric and hybrid vehicle design and technology with a publication that I launched back in 1995 called Electric and Hybrid Vehicle Technology International and it became a very natural marriage of the two things. We were involved in other industry sectors which were dovetailing into the post industry as well and, and it all made great sense to us. Later, uh, as we launched a show in 1997, we then got involved uh, after that with the Universal Postal Union and that's been a fantastic uh, marriage really between uh, two uh, organisations working in harmony. Very good. Now you were our featured guest on the most recent episode of the UPU Voicemail podcast and one of the things you mentioned during our discussion was about how, I'm not going to say the show has something for everyone, but how your technical people will look at the technology but the CEOs take a broader view. Can you just enlarge on that just a little bit, please? I think it's really important uh, that we see that difference. Um, technologists are technical people. They come to this show, they, they sort of fundamentally know what they're looking for. They're trying to make things work together, synchronize, integrate, and all that stuff. Uh, and, and they're technical people. CEOs and other senior board members can come to this show and look at how you can benefit from new technologies and the strategies that can come out of those technologies. You know, the, the technology, and that's the beauty of the show, it is a technology showcase for the industry. The new inventions are coming out here. CEOs can look at those inventions, not as a technologist, but as strategists. And they can see, okay, what could we do here is this a new business opportunity that's coming out of this technology or is it just something that will make us more efficient, uh, do the job better, whatever. Um, but those CEO people and senior board members, really, really important that they can see at the bigger picture level the strategic benefits that can come out of all of these lovely new inventions. And of course it's a great place to network and meet fellow CEOs and postal leaders. But 
Enough about that later, as we say. Now, Alexander turns Vanberg, you are the secretary of the UPU Consultative Committee. So, can you share with the audience what the main reasons were behind the committee's restructuring and opening up to the new private partners and how it might even change the UPU's engagement with the wider sector? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So um, the changing and the opening up or the transformation of the consultative committee of the UPU was uh, actually a decision taken by the UPU uh, Congress uh, last year. And um, uh, the engagement that uh, the UPU is now taking with the private se uh, sector is actually unique. It's a historical moment of, uh, uh, of the life, if I can say, of the Universal Postal Union this uh, UN specialized agency uh, created in 1874, for those of you who don't remember that, it's an old lady, uh, became the UPU, an agency after the Second World War, and has gradually evolved over the years, going through different crises, I would say, crises which the Post have gone through also, with the uh, arrival of internet in the 70s, e-commerce and so forth. And today is, I would say, a very special day because the consultative committee, yes, has been transformed and is allowing private companies to become members of the consultative committee. Previously, we only had uh, uh, designated operators who could be members. Uh, we on, only had uh, non-governmental organizations and also we had uh, industry associations, right? Uh, but the fact that we are opening up now to the private sector entities is a major breakthrough in, in our history. Um, we are trying to um, uh, create the relevance that uh, we were uh, actually uh, about to lose, meaning working closer with the private sector. Uh, the UPU is and will remain relevant and the fact that we are now together working closely with the private sector is a blessing for all of us and we have a value proposition for the private companies coming on board and uh, we have already noted uh, a lot of uh, interest for uh, incoming members to work with us. Thank you. And we're going to talk to one of those private members now. Private members, private partners, whatever the best term, term is. Mario, Mario Achilman, tell us, uh, what, why did you decide to join, which I suppose is the obvious question, why did you choose to join the UPU Consultative Committee? And what would you expect to, to gain, either personally, as an organisation, out of the collaboration, even what might you even contribute? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us here in this line. We're really excited about it. And uh, as Mail Alliance, we have uh, to deal uh, with all the today's struggle and challenges, but also with the possibilities. Partnership without borders. This means we have to work together on short ways, perfect preparation and smart standardization from shipping to the delivery port. And we all have to work on it global and together and that's why we are thankful for the work of the UPU and we are very proud being part of it in, in form of the consultative committee. We're taking our chance and our responsibility for that. And the postal market with focus on the e-commerce shipments from cross-border to domestic and at Mail Alliance we have everything uh, to deal with it here in Germany. And we're excited um, what, what happens next and uh, we're, we're working for our opportunities. And the most important thing for us is we, uh, we have a clear vision. We believe in, in the globalization of the postal market and a strong meaning of our postal market here uh, in Germany. And so that's the, the perfect match to, to, to get these shipments and, and all these uh, gentlemen and the ladies and gentlemen from the postal uh, companies worldwide to get one standard and to, to do this, this business uh, in, in line of today's uh, technology because it's very advanced and we're excited being part of it. Thank you for that Mario and our, la our last panellist, our fourth panellist I should say rather than last is Sol Alavi from Geomain and Sol I'm going to ask you the same question really, a why join, what do you expect to contribute or get out of it and maybe even what sort of synergies do you see between your company and what the UPU Consultative Committee does? Thank you very much. Uh, primarily, uh, Geomain is a provider of a universal digital identity. 
um, and the postal union with all the level of trust that basically it engenders globally is an ideal partner for, uh, you know we see them as an ideal launch partner for a universal digital identity it's also something that over the course of the years we believe is going to become an absolute must for everyone to transact online and perhaps even off offline um, at the moment what's really happening is you know we have this whole digital transformation revolution going on but if you really analyze that very closely you will see that what's what's lacking is a is a individual level digital identity so we are bringing that to the table and we feel that the UPU is a perfect and fantastic partner to launch that because having been around uh, for centuries literally right uh, and having the kind of physical distribution network in terms of all the postal members right uh, and and most of these postal members are obviously you know government uh, in most cases government owned and government led so there isn't anything comparable out there which can actually do this job any better than the UPU. So um, our joining the consultative committee, uh, the goal here really is uh, twofolds. First and foremost, to, to you know what we have developed over the last five years, we've been working on Geomain since 2016. So we wanna basically bring that out for the benefit of everybody in the world. And obviously in doing that, I think what's gonna happen is that the UPU is going to become more and more relevant Right, uh, the, the the kind of decline we've been seeing in in revenues for postal members, uh, you know, across the world because of uh, e-commerce and then e you know emails, as as you just mentioned, all of these are obviously challenges that the uh, you know basically we uh, you know we the UPU has been facing, uh, but insofar as if the UPU becomes a a custodian, if you may, of the universal digital identity. We, then we think that that's going to be a game changer for the UPU for decades to come. And we look forward to working with them on this. Thank you. Thank you, Sol. And you've touched on an important topic there, about, that about digital identity and sort of the overall role of the post. Possibly more than we can, we'd be biting off more than we can chew in this short session if we go too much into that. But Tony, I want to return to you because I like your perspective as an insider and an outsider when it comes to the postal world. And one of the common themes that we've heard from our panelists just now has been this idea of cooperation between the public, so the, the postal operators, and the private operators. Um, tell me, from your perspective, is this really the key to survival of the sector, this need to be, to find functioning partnerships, I suppose? Uh, I'm gonna go to your first comment uh, to begin with, because, um, Sometimes when you're doing what we do as an organization, we publish magazines and we run uh, exhibitions in certain industry sectors. Um, I, I sometimes see the industry as being something in a goldfish bowl. And we have the opportunity, rather interestingly, to be able to look into the bowl and see all the fish swimming around. And on the other hand, the bowl, the industry, it, it can look out and it gets a different perspective because it sees the customer on the outside of the bowl and the customer can look very different and can actually be uh, even change shape because the bowl creates an odd perspective. You might not always understand exactly who the customer is or where the customer is going. And, and this industry is really changed you know since 1997 I first started looking at it as I said before in about 1995 well of course the letter business was a huge huge business and the parcel delivery business was a very small business and now as we know that's completely inverted in almost all parts of the world the parcel delivery uh, element has gone through the roof and I, I think it's really really important and, and really great to see UPU now opening the doors to the parcel delivery companies that are not part of the traditional postal community. And, and that's really great, it's really healthy. Uh, and I think it's also really healthy that the posts, which are historically quite traditional sorts of businesses that often don't realize how high tech they are. And I think that's a very interesting peculiarity because the posts are very high tech, very clever organizations, but now encouraging them to be doing 
business more to bring in third party private company partners to add expertise and capability around what they're doing, that is a fundamental important thing too. So um, whichever side of the bowl you're on, I think uh, is a very, very interesting period of time. Oh, Alexander, Tony's compared the postal sector to a fishbowl. I, <laughs> I think- I love sushi. You, oh gosh. Well, I would kind of suggest it's perhaps also could be seen as an ecosystem and that the part, postal world is part of it, the private operators are part of it. So tell us a bit from your perspective, is this collaboration that the UPU is facilitating through its own consultative committee, this collaboration with public and private providers, is it sort of a necessity, do you think, for the survival of the sector? Uh, for the sector, that's a, that's, a big, uh, that's a big thing to say, but I think uh, that the UPU uh, as a specialized agency and intergovernmental organization uh, has a lot to gain from it and so uh, does uh, its members. The members being the designated uh, postal operators, the regulators and the ministries in charge of post. The missing uh, uh, stepstone was the private sector. As I said earlier, um, we only had industry associations and how well could they actually represent the individual members if an association has about 100 or 200,000 members. So it was about time that the private uh, companies could actually join and uh, we uh, see the fact that we are facilitating the contacts between them as a very healthy uh, approach because transparency and I presume that, Tony, you were referring to this fishbowl as a transparent fishbowl, so you could actually see through it as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we could see into it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think it's, um, again, uh, I'm so happy and I'm so proud to sit next to my two new CC members because they have the right attitude, they have the right spirit. They could be competitors and they would still sit here and talk. As a matter of fact, we do have competing uh, uh, consultative committee members among themselves and they are committed to collaborate with the consultative committee to make this a better place. Mario, do you want to just comment on what Alexander said there, in particular how you can have potentially com uh, commercial competitors sitting next to each other and yet there's a spirit of collaboration and needing to move the whole sector forward. Can you just share some thoughts on that please? Uh, I guess the, the meaning thing is um, we, we started uh, many years before to, to get this global spirit into our domestic business because uh, me by myself we running out in about 2018 to um, buy first electric cars to drive to go um, our postal network on a, a size of green logistics and we, we found um, that that's the thing global and worldwide and uh, we we have to do it powerful we have to do it smart and powerful to to go into a, to a game changer and that's why we're we're so happy and glad being part in the UPU consultative committee because um, we have all the same vision we, we we run in our business but uh, we we um, we're working um, together on it and to to share this knowledge everybody everybody have and in, in our case it's uh, the, the smallest piece of the supply chain is the regional um, thing because we're as Mail Alliance Germany we run in this business by ourselves we have our own um, splitting and sorting companies um, and we all have um, our own people for the last mile delivery but we also have 90 partners in Germany who's working with us on our label, on our standard. And that's why we're proud to combinate this all together. So, so maybe just a word on what was said, because it's very, very interesting. You see, Mail Alliance uh, is like the UPU, but in the domestic <laughs> market of Germany. So they have these 90 or 100 companies that are doing exactly the same thing as the company you also, you are into operations today. And they actually distribute, pick up and, and, and collect and, and distribute in the same areas. They have their own remuneration system. They have a lot of things that are very interesting actually to share with the UPU, right? And the fact that they are working with competitors is a very interesting aspect, very interesting. Sol, do you have anything you'd like to add on this same theme of you know, the, the cooperation between competitors and the, the, even the role that your own company plays in the entire ecosystem or goldfish bowl as you prefer of the parcel and postal delivery world? 
uh, <clears throat> with regards to the whole you know competitive spirit i think that at the end of the day it is obviously beneficial for the entire ecosystem uh, it, it it really boils down to consumer choice at the end of the day right so if as as alexander said when we have competing uh, com, you know cc members uh, all of them working towards the same goal then i think that that is going to definitely be fundamentally beneficial to the entire postal uh, and logistics ecosystem uh, you know as it exists today uh, do you mean uh, you know with regards to our company as well uh, you know i you know we don't have any any competitors as such directly uh, you know in terms of what what we do because we actually focus on not just the last mile but really the last meter delivery uh, so uh, there's some outside outside of the box thinking that we've done over there um, and obviously we would like that uh, you know as people would adopt this and companies would adopt this they would basically see the value at off of this and if there is competition then obviously we would welcome it because it will just help us to stay on our toes. Alexandra I want to come back to sort of this global perspective because one of the things about the UPU is it does have its, its constituent states are everywhere Western Europe, South Pacific, everywhere in between. Can this opening up be of benefit to every nation in the world? And well, that's a bit of a leading question there isn't it? But. Well, uh, let's not uh, uh, confuse the uh, transformation and the opening up of the Consultative Committee with the opening up of the Universal uh, Postal Union. Two different topics uh, uh, which way down the road could end up to something, a convergence. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, broadly speaking, um, what's happening right now, uh, we have to look at it um, as a matter of uh, uh, a seamless uh, uh, e-commerce journey uh, and put the consumer and the customer in the center of what's happening. That's the ultimate goal. And as long as we do not talk about the customers, we are off track. We need to keep customer focus. That's my answer to your question. Very good. Thank you, Alexander. Now, let's talk about the practical considerations um, when it comes to the the opening up of a consultative committee and the work that it does and delivering the work that it does. So we've talked a little bit about, about finding synergies. Have, have you identified any obstacles that need to be overcome as part of achieving this opening up and this, these synergies and working together? Um, Alexander, perhaps if you could start with some thoughts. And I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the first obstacle is fear. Fear uh, of uh, when, when change comes around, people are not used to work in a certain manner. What's happening at the UPU now, uh, now through the uh, uh, new structure of the Consultative Committee is that private companies will be able to interact, contribute to the work of the UPU through a structure that will allow us to put, provide input to the work of the Postal Operations Council and the Council of Administration. So of course, of course, the designated postal operators are wondering uh, what is happening? Are they? Uh, are, is this transparent? Is there something fishy around this? Uh, is it going to, you know, cause uh, us harm, or is it going to create problems? So we are organized in a very good manner in the stru structure of the CC. So uh, it's just actually contributing with input to the work of the UPU in a way that actually enriches the dialogue with the uh, designated operators. That's what we're doing, bringing in the private sector perspective. So it's not just designated operators talking uh, among designated operators about their problems. It's also, there is another stakeholder out there called the private sector. Bring them into the table, have them contribute to the discussion, and maybe the end of the discussion will be enriched. Probably yes, absolutely yes. Uh, Mario, you're nodding your head furiously there. Would you like to add any comments on what Alexandra has just said? Yes, um, for sure. I'm uh, totally with you, Alexander. And I guess, guess one of the main things we figured out, we're talking a lot of uh, trust. It had to, depends on, on trust in together, and so we're so thankful for the work of UPU. Because um, today I'm sitting here as the managing director of Mail Alliance, and we can say, hey, we're member 
of a UPU. We, we, we check together, we're trained together, and um, we, we have um, the same standardization. And so um, we, we can uh, the, talk about the exchange of posters in, in one thing, because we know we have over us, we, we have the, the label of the UPU, and you know, we're all uh, talking about the same thing. And for me, it's a, it's a great issue to keep it up and up and get smarter in this process. Yes, uh, yesterday at the World Leadership Forum, uh, the, the chair of the Consultative Council had basically mentioned that the UPU had essentially undersold itself. And I think that that's so true because if you look at everything that the UPU has and its history, right, and the level of trust that it engenders in the wider public, it's absolutely amazing. And, and, and I'll repeat myself in saying there isn't another organization similar to that that exists today on the planet. So um, in bringing in the private sector, what's really uh, is going to happen, in my opinion, is that it's, it's really the spark that's going to set the whole thing, you know, absolutely alive. Uh, you know, for the entire ecosystem because, uh, you know, when you don't have competition, right, we all tend to go to sleep. I think that's human nature, right? So um, in terms of bringing in uh, competing players from the private sector who are competing amongst themselves and now can add value to the entire UPU e ecosystem, I think it's probably the best thing that's happened to the UPU in the last hundred years, if not more. An interesting comment there, Tony, that pop cropped up yesterday as well is this this uh, concept that perhaps the UPU has undersold itself over the years. Uh, what's, what's your perspective on that? I think it's a very healthy change that the UPU is going through. And, um, you know, we've inevitably not only rebranded the show from being post-expo to being parcel and post-expo. Um, increasingly over the last 10 years, we've had the big companies, the FedExes and the UPSs and the DHLs coming to the show. They're becoming more and more involved with the show. They're, the, the parcel bit is the big bit. And, and I think, you know, without doing what Universal Postal Union have done by embracing the other half of the industry, uh, I've always felt that the posts deliver about half of the world's parcels and the other companies um, who are now being enabled to become members deliver the other half and yeah living without that other half would be a, a bad thing now for those of you watching at home or at the office or, or while you're out and about who knows where you're watching this right now remember if you're on the swap card app you can ask questions and I'll pass the questions on to the panelists live that's terrifying isn't it so keep it clean everybody keep it relevant I'm sure we can trust you. Um, Alexander, now that we've sort of had a broad discussion about this concept of change and all that, just can you share a little bit about how this is going to work in practice within the consultative committee? Because I understand there's, sort of, there's some subdivision of the actual work that it's doing in, I think, are they called consultative groups? Can you just share a little bit about that, please? So you're talking about the structure of the consultative committee? Is that what you're yeah. referring to? Yeah. Yeah, so we're organized today uh, in six thematic chapters. Each and one of the uh, chapters are actually the mirror of the work that's uh, happening in the Postal Operations Council uh, through the standing working groups and the task force uh, groups and also uh, what's happening in the council administration, uh, uh, mainly from a policy and regulatory perspective. Uh, so. Uh, we are not bound by the six chapters, but we need it to start somewhere. So it's a living product and this uh, will evolve over time. There may be new chapters coming up. Uh, we have already foreseen how it can grow uh, um, uh, virtu vertically in the sense that we can have sub-categories, sub-thematic chapters. And hence, for each and one of the chapters, we have uh, chapter rapporteurs or leaders, if you wish. And they will then uh, be responsible for driving the work in each and one of the thematic chapters. They will, uh, uh, for all the CC members who have uh, assigned themselves to one of the chapters as members, will then contribute with their private uh, sector perspectives and technologies and what have you, experience and, and, and knowledge and a, a white paper or PowerPoint presentation will be produced, short thematic uh, you know, uh, feedback, which will then be dragged and dropped into the 
uh, uh, folders of the PUC and CA working groups. So this will be the pragmatic and uh, I would say the operational approach to, to contribute through the thematic chapter. Then of course yesterday in, in one of the sessions uh, a question was asked about the uh, academia. And academia is of course not on the um, structure today. We will uh, immediately make sure that we get uh, the, the academia into the picture as well because they will provide uh, all the research uh, and, and, and that set of uh, um, uh, university and, and think tanks and what have you that will complement uh, and make the structure complete. Uh, today uh, we are growing and uh, we are also offering through the thematic chapters the possibility to our members to actually get uh, to be visible, very visible. You know that the PUC and the CA they meet twice a year at the UPU and all uh, those uh, uh, designated operators and the regulators and the ministers in charge of post are coming, attending the sessions and then the CC member has got the possibility to sponsor an evening reception so they get like uh, a lot of attention and this is also a business opportunity but it's also an opportunity to exchange and, and, and have the private sector inside the house. They are part of the family now. There's no way back. So can you just what are the thematic chapters again, please? Thematic chapters, uh, you have, uh, for example, yeah, there are six. So we have regulatory and policy, we have customs, we have uh, e-commerce, we have transport, we have, uh, I don't know, uh, what, uh, that's five, which one? addressing and direct marketing is the sixth one. So those chapters are not bound to stay always the same. They can evolve over time. So no one's going to get yelled at to stay in their lane or anything like that. Mario, can you just share a little bit about the thematic chapter that you're involved in and is anything that you're allowed to share at this early stage about the kind of work that your chapter might be undertaking? Um, one thing is um, the technology today is, is advanced and, and one um, thing from us is we're, we're really looking forward to bring our part in the complete thing in the IT section to, to get it smooth and get it smart and, and uh, get it quick. Well, the, the quick exchange of, of data, that's one um, thing we're, we're using and we're working for in the UPU. And so, same question for you, can you comment on some of the work that your chapter, your thematic chapter, I beg your pardon, is doing? Uh, we belong to the addressing chapter and uh, the goal here basically with Geomain is to assign every individual with a digital address. Uh, that's the solution that we are bringing on the table and uh, we look forward to working with the UPU to basically uh, help us to roll this out globally a lot in conjunction with all the postal uh, partners all over the world, the post offices. Um, again, uh, obviously uh, the, the post offices being the natural uh, and the most logical uh, a partner that has the capability and the clout to do this. Getting that global address data is hugely important in the world of cross-border e-commerce. I could talk about that for another hour, but uh, we've got a question that's coming from Swapcast. Remember, if you're watching this at home or at the office or from your home office, or from your office, which is actually your home because you spend so much time there. Remember, you can go to Swapcard, ask your questions there, and I'll ask it of our esteemed panel. Uh, the question is, how, this is from Alfredo, who says, how do you think the marketplaces should partner with the UPU or join it? Now, that's a great question, the marketplaces. Who's our volunteer to answer that one? Alexandra, it's just... Start. Yes, thank you. We welcome the marketplaces to the UPU. They should come, they should sign up, and they should work with us because now more than ever is the right time to join and actually uh, we will need them uh, because they will uh, contribute uh, a lot and we will be able to benefit from their experience, their expertise uh, and we may have uh, some solutions for them for very tri tricky uh, market situations in um, areas of the world where the market might not be as organized as they are used to like in Europe, North America or uh, other places in Asia for instance. The African market is the next uh, uh, double or triple uh, digit uh, 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 um, uh, what do you call it, uh, growth market. So I think uh, we're very keen on, on working on that so we welcome all these marketplaces uh, quickly and they can just call me or send me an email and I'll be there and respond to them. I feel like we should put Alexander's phone number underneath this, underneath this video feed. Call Alexander now. 
or ring this number and ask to speak to Alexander. Anyway, Tony, marketplaces, just by the by, that's, this is a huge thing, isn't it? I mean, I shop on Amazon. I'm, I'm, I'll happily admit that, everybody. I'll confess. I shop on Amazon. So what? What are you going to do about it? Anyway, I shop on Amazon. But the second-hand marketplaces are a huge growth market. Marketplace, the marketplace would be a growth market. You all know what I mean. Are you just, just between you and me and everybody watching at home, do you ever, have you ever shopped on any of those second-hand marketplaces, Tony? Like uh, likes of Vinted or Wallapop or OLX. What are the other ones? Well, I can't think of any others off well, the top of my head. Um, I'm glad to say we do have uh, people here from eBay. And I guess eBay is one of the founding companies of the second-hand marketplace online. Uh, everything's changing very rapidly. And, you know, I, I, I think when I did a podcast with you a while back, um, not long ago, I was talking about the parcel delivery industry being in a bit of a Wild West condition. Uh, and really by that I mean um, it, 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 it's easy to not realise this sort of quantum shift that's happened with parcels. Parcels were delivered, as we well know, 50 years ago or more. But now parcels are being delivered by the millions of items, and that's a big, big shift. So uh, I, I see things going wrong, and we all see things going wrong. We order a knife and fork, and it turns up in a huge box. Um, we we um, see, see various situations going on to do with I think over quick delivery speeds instead of consolidated deliveries and I think that's a really important part of the whole process of sustainability and, and actually using giant boxes and wasting materials and using not very good materials is all going to be part of the growing up process. The, 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 the second hand market, well it's a fabulous part of the world and um, all part of the business. I think it's interesting how the internet and app-driven marketplaces have, have made it, dare I say, it's seamless. It was once upon a time you have to buy the trading post or pick up loot, something like that, to uh, engage in the second-hand marketplace. But Tony, you've just made a couple of hugely important points there about things like packaging, efficiency of delivery, and topics like this. Uh, Alexander, are these the sorts of topics that are going to be part of the conversation with the private players inside of this new look, if that's the right word, uh, consultative council structure? Absolutely. And uh, it's going to be actually critical that those topics come up to the surface because um, uh, it's impossible that the Post uh, have got all this knowledge by themselves. Uh, the, the kind of uh, research and, and uh, and investments that are required uh, are just too big for any post in the world actually. So all these topics will come up to the surface. Something that I would like to point out since you talked about the marketplaces, uh, coincidentally uh, Am Amazon reached out to us and had a meeting with us this morning and I think uh, sooner than later they will be joining the consultative committee and that's only a matter of time before all the big companies will come in because they start understanding that things are happening at the UPU and if we have um, uh, startups joining already um, uh, sector players uh, in, uh, in cross-border e-commerce it's going to be an amazing uh, uh, set for exchange for growth together uh, and making the customer journey unique and seamless so it's just I would be more than happy to uh, actually give your phone number. So if you are interested, reach out to my colleague here <laughs> and friend. And then, no. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> another trend for us to look out for when we're talking about membership of the consultant committee, the marketplaces, of course, is uh, the global shipping companies, the likes of Mesk who are getting into the last mile and are creating vertically integrated companies. So they'll be the next one to ring Alexander on 1-800-CALL-ALEXANDER. I'm sorry, I don't know the number, um, but get in contact with Alexander at the UPU. Um, gentlemen, let's just, one of the topics we were just talking about was the importance of sustainability and efficiencies in the last mile. One of the big topics, is there any, any thoughts you can share on this and the work that you're doing or any comments at all on how we in the delivery world can either reduce packaging, as Tony said, or be more efficient in the last mile to minimise our impact on the environment. Um, 
yes, uh, for sure. The, the the way and the journey we're all on is um, is a clean mix on the classic postal and now the parcel world. So we're on the last mile uh, delivery and we, we have um, a great shape in this and um, the, the part is we have to deal with uh, the, the big volume of marketplaces and also it allows us to support some um, some newcomer in, in business and that's our splitting and um, on last mile delivery I think it's the, the, the key point to, to work on, on synergy to get it more efficiency and um, work for the economy. Uh. Yes, uh, <coughs> research indicates that uh, the last mile delivery component in terms of cost is uh, you know about 52 percent and that's a huge if you look at it and a lot of the times the reason why that co you know that cost component is so high is primarily because people are not available addresses are wrong people have moved on right and and that results as you can imagine in uh, the delivery man going round and round looking for you know looking for an address that doesn't exist address integrity issues so all of these issues are absolutely uh, you know, uh, fundamental uh, that we have to solve if we want to basically make, uh, you know, work towards a more greener world. And I'm very happy to say, once again, that GeoMain basically addresses a lot of these issues. Um, uh, uh, some of the studies uh, basically that have been done indicate that, uh, you know, there is uh, efficiency enhancement of up to 15% when a GPS is used as a coordinate for a delivery location. So uh, we look forward, obviously, uh, to working with all the, uh, uh, you know, with the UPU as well as all the members uh, of the Consultative Council, the private sector as well, uh, to help uh, them adopt uh, technology that is going to help all of us to have a greener world. And Alexander, just building on what we've just heard, one of the questions that comes up from time to time is how can you make technology and solutions accessible to those last mile operators, let's say a, a small post, that might not have a huge budget, might not have the really deep pockets. Can you see the work that we're doing here, we, the UPU is doing here and its new partners, as being able to contribute to those smaller operators via the appropriate channels, having access to some of these technologies and solutions? Yes, so you see the, the way we work today um, inside the consultative committee will also open up the door uh, for small posts in developing and the, la uh, the least developed countries to, uh, to um, benefit from all, all these uh, technology efficiencies. Why? Simply because uh, we are uh, running a cooperation development project at the UPU. We are helping um, and we have always done that at the UPU, the least uh, uh, developed uh, posts out there. And sometimes we have uh, projects uh, where we now will be able to also approach uh, the post from a different angle, bringing in uh, our consultative committee members' expertise, because they are now part of the family. And if there is a particular post in a poor country uh, who needs assistance, whether it is in last mile delivery or addressing or whatever, some of these projects, of course, we will approach our consultative committee members and ask them, is there a way we can help this pose to actually become more efficient, become uh, a more uh, greener in terms of a, um, um, a carbon footprint and so forth? And this is going to be a game changer because they are here, of course, for the business, but they're also here to contribute uh, to the UPU as a system, as a backbone for everybody to play on. We are almost out of time, so I'll ask you all to collect your thoughts and share with just a, a few thoughts again on this, the broader concept here, the, 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 this idea of partnerships without borders and the opening up of the consultative committee to the private partners and also sort of the, glo the, the state, more broadly speaking, of the, uh, the delivery world and the partnerships that we're seeing. Um, Tony, if I may start with you, you've, you've certainly set the conversation going with your comments on packaging there. Just any final comments from you on, on this idea of partnerships without borders in this globalised world? No, I think it's all about working together, integration. Uh, I think there's a lot of stuff to be done to improve the way this huge industry works. And it's very uh, easy to fail to recognise quite how big 
um, the post and parcel deliveries industries are. You know, uh, when I first started looking into the goldfish bowl, as I referred to earlier on, um, one of the things that it, I found was that in almost every country in the world, the biggest fleet of vehicles was off, uh, operated by the post. And now, actually, if you look at the parcel delivery community as well, the biggest fleets of the vehicles that are being used around the world are being operated either by the post or the parcel delivery companies. A lot of people never noticed that, I think it was DHL, that uh, became one of the top 10 airlines in the world just because of the huge amount of stuff that they're delivering all over the place. So, you know, look, this is a huge industry. In terms of words like sustainability, this industry has a huge impact. And the more we get productive development and cooperation between the various communities, whether they're private or public, that's only going to be a good thing. And you've touched on the idea of the social role of the post. That's hugely important, isn't it? Yeah, the, the post is often one of the biggest employers in the country. We should never overlook that, the role of the post as an employer and a provider of effectively a social benefit for the people. However, possibly a topic for another day. Alexander, any fi your final thoughts, please. Uh, you're absolutely right. The Post is one of the biggest employers in the countries, uh, but one of the biggest creator of jobs is the small and medium-sized companies around the world. And uh, uh, part of the UPU strategy and mission is also, of course, to work very closely with the small and medium-sized companies. And in my other responsibility uh, uh, of uh, managing the donor relations and, and resource mobilization uh, at the UPU, I'm reaching out to all uh, the big banks, uh, the, Glo the World Bank, the mm, regional development banks, uh, uh, institutional donors, if you wish, and also uh, companies like Visa, MasterCard, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and uh, the Global Alliance for Trade Facilitation, etc., etc. So the approach with the banks is to actually uh, 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 collect uh, resources to uh, implement big regional po uh, projects for post. Currently we're discussing uh, with uh, a, a big a large bank in, um, uh, in Central America uh, uh, and uh, the Costa Rica post. Uh, they have recently received funding to uh, um, renew uh, their fleet of vehicles to clean vehicles. They have also received funding from this uh, very same bank. Uh, it's a solar uh, panel uh, uh, project uh, to reduce their uh, carbon footprint because obviously in many countries where it's very hot they use a lot of electricity for the ACs. So uh, this, is, this is also an approach that we have to work very closely to facilitate uh, 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 cross-border e-commerce for small and medium-sized companies to make that uh, their journey uh, seamless. Thank you. And Mario, some final thoughts for you on this concept of partnerships without borders? Yes, of course, this is all set. And uh, one thing is, look, at, at Germany there are 55,000 people working uh, for Mail Alliance to doing their job, to doing, we're English, uh, the, 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 we're uh, benchmarked by the worldwide industry. And uh, so we're in collaboration and um, every day we're, we're on getting smarter, getting cleaner, getting faster. And that's what we're doing. Um, and uh, tell me, uh, that's with passion. We love it. And Sol, some final thoughts from you, please. Uh, as somebody who's been in technology for north of 20 years, uh, what I really think is going to happen is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, over, over a period of time, the UPU will perhaps evolve into becoming one of the biggest SaaS players where services by a whole variety of, pub, you know, private sector players c can be made available to all postal partners and vice versa. Uh, basically over the over the internet um, and I think that uh, in becoming a major SaaS player right okay there's going to be tremendous benefits to the end consumer uh, as we talked earlier keeping the customer in the center that has to be the focus uh, and at the same time it's going to bring economies of scale because you're talking about a huge huge volume that's going to be uh, you know that can be delivered over the uh, you know over SaaS and uh, certainly it's going to be something that is uh, yet again going to strengthen the UPU so we look forward to that well I'd like to thank 
our four panellists today. Tony Robertson, UKR Media and Events, founder of Post Expo as it then was, Parcel and Post Expo, the 25th, the 25th edition or 25th anniversary this year? 20, 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary. Uh, Alexander Tedens, I'll get it in a sec. Sandberg. I'm doing this without my glasses, everybody. I'm reading it off a phone. Cut me some slack, all right? Um, from the UPU, thank you very much for your comments today. Mario Eichelmann from Mail Alliance and Sol Alavi from Jailmain. Thank you all very much. Those of you watching at home, please give us a virtual round of applause for our panellists. Um, and remember, you can subscribe to the UPU voicemail podcast. The most recent episode was an interview with Tony Robinson here, talking about the evolution of the postal sector over the last 25 years, along with some personal observations from Tony. Well worth a listen. So please do subscribe to the podcast in your favourite podcast platform. And even in podcast platforms you, you're not that fond of. I don't mind as long as you subscribe, that'd be great. Um, my thanks as always to the UPU team for putting together this event and to Andy and the entire crew at UKI for making us look beautiful on television. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and um, take it easy, everybody. All right. <laughs>